Attorney General has declared a red flag alert on this, writing a letter to President Obama vowing to sue the administration, uh, saying, quote, treaties do not trump constitutional liberty. Even if you as the president signed and the Senate ratified the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty, our Constitution remains the supreme law of the land and would supersede any treaty provision that violated Second Amendment rights. The Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott joins me live now from Austin. Uh, General, it's great to see you again. So let me ask you, if that is true, and certainly it must be that the U.S. Constitution would trump any international treaty that we were uh, to approve, still have to go through the Senate and the President, what's the concern? Who cares if we sign it or we don't sign it? We're going to abide by our Constitution. Right. Well, well the concern, Megan, uh, first of all, it's great to be back with you, but the concern is that we would get to that place uh, at all. The, the concern is uh, that the United States is trying to use the United Nations as a backdoor mechanism to try to legislate here in the United States, in this instance, trying to impose gun control. And we're reviewing this administration's work with the United Nations as an imminent threat to our liberties. And we want to lay down this issue up front, raise the warning with Americans, so we can make sure that, first of all, the Senate votes against ratification of the treaty, but secondly, so we will be prepared to wage litigation if we have to, to make sure that the UN is not going to be regulating firearms in this country. But help me understand where the risk is, because what the UN says, what, what uh, the backers of this treaty domestically have said is, this is about arms control, trying to prevent guns from getting into the hands of bad people overseas. It doesn't have anything to do with American gun rights. And so they say, you know, Greg Abbott is right when it comes to what happens inside the borders of the United States. Uh, the Constitution will control. This is about preventing stuff bad, bad stuff from happening outside of our borders. Right. What you're raising right now is the real concern, Megan, and that is that the backers of this, the Obama administration, are going to be selling this on two grounds, one of which is what you just laid out, the other of which is that seven of the eight items to be regulated involve things like tanks and aircraft and carriers and things like that, not these small guns. And so let's say who's against, you know, tanks cracked down on. Here's the issue, Megan, and that is uh, because this vaguely worded document allows the United Nations to impose registration requirements, regulatory requirements, uh, uh, crack down on transfer of weapons, uh, it's going to make it so that there is the ability later on, after this is passed, uh, if it is ratified, for the UN to have even greater authority to regulate firearms and our Second Amendment rights. And the United Nations simply cannot be uh, uh, counted on to safeguard our Bill of Rights here in the United States. So if, there's, if this UN treaty directly conflicts with a ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court interpreting the Second Amendment, etc., it would be clear that we wouldn't have to abide by the treaty. But your point seems to be there may be some gaps, there may be some things that the U.N. tries to control that our law hasn't specifically gotten to yet, and so it could lead to more gun control here in the United States that the U.N. would have to oversee. Precisely. This is a step in a very dangerous direction, and that is the argument could be made that the treaty is uh, worded so vaguely. Uh, there is no specific violation of a Second Amendment right now. Uh, Second Amendment right right now. However, there could be a violation later on, depending upon the way that the United Nations applies and interprets this treaty hmm. at a future date. So, who would enforce uh, we, it? Who, we who would enforce not, it, this, General? Who, who, if if we here in the United States did run afoul somehow of this treaty? Who would come knocking on our door to say, you screwed up under the treaty? Right. There is now a secretariat who is now going to be in charge of uh, imposing uh, these regulations, making sure that everything is complied with. So there is this new bureaucratic uh, person and agency at the United Nations that's going to be overseeing all this, and looking at seeing what the United States is doing, which, of course, is another one of the concerns that we have about this law. Our, our treaty. Yeah, it reminds me of the um, the election when they had the UN was sending you know poll watchers. They wanted to send poll watchers into Texas among other places, and we asked ourselves exactly who is going to try to tell a Texan that you know he, he's not allowed to vote because they're and, not satisfied. It, it raises similar it issues, does it not? Yeah. I'm the one who raised the issue about United Nations related uh, poll watchers coming into Texas going into the polling areas and monitoring what we're doing here. We don't need the United Nations running Texas elections. We don't need the United Nations safeguarding our Second Amendment rights because they cannot be trusted with that. I got it. We'll wait to see whether the White House responds to you. Sir, thank you so much for being here again. Thank you, Megan. Well, it took less than 25